Shalom and greetings. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Passover and uh, when to keep it and how to keep it and what to do, especially if you're just one person and you live on your own and you have no one to fellowship with, or just your family, or maybe a small group too. So I'm going to go over on what, to, what you should do for the Passover. This year, in 2009, the, pass, the, the year, the biblical year, starts on the evening at sunset of March 26th. That's a Thursday. Okay, it starts at sunset in Jerusalem, and then that affects the whole earth as, as the day comes around. So the first day of the year is um, basically coincides with Friday, March 27th. You count 14 days from then, as you've seen in my other videos about keeping the Passover. Um, the Passover is kept on the 14th day of the first month. The first month is called Aviv. It coincides basically with uh, March or April, as you can see. So the 14th day of that biblical first month in this year coincides with April 8th. It starts April 8th, that's a Wednesday, at sunset. So on Wednesday evening at sunset, wherever you live, that's when the Passover starts. So just after sunset is when you should have your Passover ceremony. It can start immediately after Passover. It shouldn't go way off late into the evening. So you should try to start right after sunset on Wednesday, April 8th. Okay? So that night, you get together with your, um, the people that you're going to keep the Passover with or on your own if you're by yourself. And uh, what you're going to need basically are three things. Uh, it's a very solemn evening. It's a very serious evening because you're, you're remembering the, your, it's a reconfirmation or a recommitment of your baptism vows and the, con the agreement, the covenant, the pact that you've made with Yahweh and Yeshua for your baptism. Um, and you were baptized, and this is for baptized people only um, that are to participate in the actual ceremony of eating the bread, drinking the wine, and washing each other's feet. And that's basically what you're going to do tonight. Now that might have sounded strange to you, but think about it. That is what Yeshua told us to do. I'm going to show you the scriptures. Uh, I'm going to point out the scriptures. I'm not going to read them. You can read them on your own and do your own Bible study on it. But I will give you the scriptures that you're to read that night, and you can read them ahead of time too. I highly suggest that. I strongly suggest that because that will prepare you for it, and you can start now to prepare yourself. Hopefully, um, uh, April 8th is not too close, but even if it is tonight or tomorrow, um, you can prepare yourself for it. Okay, uh, if it's passed, then you missed it, and you can go to next year. Um, there is, uh, if you read in um, Leviticus 23, I think, and in other places, you will see that there is, uh, if you do miss the Passover for illness and serious reasons like that, that you can keep it a whole month later. Okay, so, uh, so what you're going to need is a pan to wash each other's feet in. Diff it would be nice to have a different one for each person um, with a little bit of water, and you're just going to wash with some water symbolically. I mean, you actually do it, but you don't have to wash each other's feet with soap or a scrub brush. You just put water over each other's feet. Um, and to, it's to show humility and also part of the reconfirmation of your, the, of your baptism. You're not, you don't have to get completely immersed again. You just wash each other's feet. And also because Yeshua gave us that example. Okay, you're going to need a little piece of matzah, which is unleavened bread. You should have all the leavening out of your house. That's yeast, baking soda, baking powder. And you just have a small piece of unleavened bread for you because you're going to have to consume it all. Or some, and some wine because that um, represents the blood. And that is just, again, a little bit of wine. Don't fill the glass all the way up because whatever you pray over, you have to consume all of it. If you don't finish it, you can pour it out on the ground and the bread should be burned or destroyed. Okay, so um, uh, let's, uh, you're going to start uh, reading in the following verses. I'm going to go through these quickly because you can pause the uh, video and write them down. And I'm going to give you a website that you can go to too, which also um, a webpage that explains 
this and you can read it more slowly. But the, the verses that you're going to read for this evening are starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30, Luke 22, verses 7 through 15, and then where it talks about the foot washing is in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Okay? So then, for the, um, after the foot washing, you're going to start the introduction of the bread and wine. Okay. So whoever's conducting the service, or you, or you can take turns in your service um, doing this, is going to read aloud Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 6, then verse 10, then verse 12. Then Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17. 1 Peter 2, verses 20 through 24. Hebrews 4, verses 14 through 16. Um, so you should um, know that this is Messiah's sacrifice was for the healing of our mind and our body. Next, um, you can read aloud John 6, verses 32 through 40, verses 40 through 48 through 51, and verses, verse 53, verses 53 through 58. Then 1 Corinthians 10, verses 16 through 17, and 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24. Then you take the napkin off of the unleavened bread, because you can cover it with a napkin to keep dust off of it. And then you break the unleavened bread, and you, pat, you, eat it, you take some, and you pass it around, and you consume all of it. Okay? And then, um, in preparation for the wine ceremony, you read aloud Matthew 26, verses 27 and 28, 1 John 1, verses 7 through 9, Hebrews 9, verses 11 through 15, and Ephesians 1, verse 7. Then you take the napkin off of the wine. I, I forgot to say that before you eat the bread, you should say a prayer and give thanks for it. And then you, um, after saying prayer and saying a prayer in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, or Meshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, then you eat the bread. You do the same for the wine after you read those verses. Okay? So um, after you say a short prayer for the wine, then you drink it and you consume all of the wine uh, with the whole group. Um, if a person cannot drink wine at all, in some cases I've heard that people who just completely will not drink wine, they could um, just, I've heard of people with a small glass, um, can just uh, take just a drop of the wine or just put their tongue in the wine. Um, some people will talk about using grape juice, but Yeshua used wine, so that's the example we have. Okay, um, the next thing is... Uh, a general reading of John 13, verse 18, through John 17. All of those chapters um, can be done. It's pretty long, but you should go through that to remember everything that Yeshua went through that night. Uh, after, the, um, after the scriptures are read, then you can sing a hymn, if possible, and dismiss everyone quietly. And, you know, it's a solemn night, so you should keep the rest of the night pretty solemn and quietly. Now, if you're probably wondering, why didn't you eat a big meal? You should eat before you go there. This is not the night for the big meal. You can have dinner before you come for the Passover, and actually you should. It's the next night. It's the night of the beginning of the 15th day when you can have the big um, meal. Um, and so you should make sure you got you have gotten rid of all of the bread and all of the wine. Okay, I will include a um, the web page, the address to the web page, in the, off to the side, and you can go check this web page, and you can read through it uh, and see all of the verses that I've quoted here. So you don't have to worry about writing them all down. All of the verses and the explanation of the whole thing, what to do for the Passover, is right there. So I hope you have a good Passover this year. If not next year. Um, of it's the first, it's the beginning of the, um, the Days of Unleavened Bread. It's just before the Days of Unleavened Bread. So I hope you're starting to prepare for that now because it's less than a month away. And um, uh, I wish you a good Passover. It's a very solemn and serious night, the most important night of the year for us true believers. So um, uh, please study up and read all of these verses before that night to prepare. Shalom and blessings to you.